What is currently happening, programs? Welcome to The Grid VR, where I'll be bringing you this week's news in virtual reality. It's Saturday, the 28th of April, 2018, and all I can say this week is, tick me to the future. We've got VRTK getting dollars Oculus style, virtual desktop optimized for mobile, Apple's 8K AR in a while, Pimax controllers, Orbis VR, Fallout 4 support, and much more. Today, I'm going to cover off the main events to keep you in the loop. So stay locked, enjoy, and welcome to the Grid VR. Virtual Reality Toolkit, or VRTK for short, has received a funding grant from Oculus according to this Twitter post. VRTK is a toolkit for Unity devs that allows them to build and prototype VR apps a lot faster than by traditional methods. Essentially, it removes the need to build basic functionality like locomotion, interaction with objects, and body physics from scratch each time. And thanks to the active community, tutorials, and support, it's also an excellent starting point for anyone looking to get into VR app development. And I've put links in the description below if you want to browse that possibility. The funding grant from Oculus seemingly holds no restraints or attempts at binding the software to being an Oculus exclusive, and it will remain open source under MIT license. One of the VRTK team even backed this up on Reddit saying that there is no clause in their contract with Oculus that dictates any type of preferential treatment for Oculus hardware or software. This is a good thing, and regardless of your take on Facebook or Oculus, this is undeniably a classy move for the VR community as a whole. Software like this is important for budding developers and developers alike where time is a constraint, and with version 4 of VRTK in development, the timing couldn't be better. G. Godin, the developer of the extremely popular virtual desktop software, has confirmed that he is developing his app for the upcoming Oculus. Go, which if reported to be believed should be announced or potentially released next week at Facebook's F8 conference. What's particularly notable about this tweet is that the dev is writing the mobile version of the software from scratch on top of the native mobile SDK designed for the Oculus Go, which means this isn't a lazy port, it's a complete rewrite of the software. Why would someone do that you ask? Well because doing it this way means that the app can be optimised to use a lot less CPU and it's the CPU usage that generates the most heat and drains the battery fastest. Given that the sole reason I don't use my Gear VR is because it overheats in 10 minutes and the battery life is atrocious, this is welcome news to say the least. It was also noted that you will be able to reset your orientation while watching movies lying down, there will be a crafty way of handing multiple monitors, a 72Hz mode for media viewing, and it was also mentioned that the visual quality of the Oculus Go and using virtual desktop on that is awesome. Whether you need this software or not, it's great to see performance, heat and battery life being considered when developing for what looks to be the best low cost mobile VR headset this year. And to be honest, virtual desktop was one of my top app picks for that headset anyways. Speculation time. Last year, Apple announced plans of an augmented reality headset that could be ready by 2019 and shipped to the masses as early as 2020. This week, C CNET has expanded on that from an unnamed source who reveals that the device may sport dual 8K per eye screens and will connect wirelessly via 60 GHz YGIG technology to an external processing unit powered by one of Apple's own proprietary 5 nanometer processors. On top of that, it was suggested the headset may also have some VR functionality. The project, codenamed T288, does sound all very Apple to me and I reckon they're a pair of AR glasses for when you iTunes and chill. All just speculation at this time, but shit, sometimes it's fun to just speculate. And briefly, the devs of the Built for VR MMO title Orbis VR are at it again with a free weekend on right now. I covered Orbis VR in this episode of the Grid VR last year, and it comes highly recommended by the community playing the game. It's 40 bucks outside of the free weekend, but has a 25% discount while the free weekend is on, landing it at 30 bucks. If you've had your eye on this title or missed the previous free weekend, then check the link in the description and play it for free up until 1pm this Sunday PST time, which is 5am Monday morning for Australians. 
Revival Productions have set a release date for their sixth degree of freedom shooter, Overload. This zero-G robot shooter has been in early access since the 13th of March, and on the 31st of May, it will hit its full stride with a 15-level single-player campaign and full multiplayer support. There is a free playable teaser, which I've linked in the description below, so feel free to give it a blast before you dive on into the $25 price tag. HTC is now selling the full Vive Pro bundle, which includes includes the headset, one controllers, and Valve Steam VR 2.0 tracking base stations. I covered the base stations in more detail in this episode of The Grid from the 15th of October last year, but as for pricing, the full bundle will land at $1,400 US. But that does include the Vive Pro and the new base stations with tracking 2.0 and controllers. Well, it justifies the price. Sorry, that's pretty fucking expensive. Baller headset though. Yeah. <laughs> the team at Pimax have put up a YouTube video and details on their website of the latest iteration of the Pimax knuckle style controllers. Quite cool to see some progress here and the controllers look decent and designed to work with Steam VR and Oculus games with all the relevant buttons. The no hold functionality of the knuckles controllers is there too, so Pimax backers could be getting the best of both worlds here. Campo Santo, the team behind Firewatch and the up and coming In the Valley of Gods, has been acquired by Valve. After Valve saying that they were working on three new VR games, this is surely a sign of things to come. And with this team having a staunch following, it definitely seems like a good sign of things to come. Also, Fallout 4 VR has had a beta patch this week that brings support for WMR and Rift headsets, making the controllers a lot more user friendly for this game. The team at Leap Motion have put up some more AR fuckery in this Project North Star YouTube video, give this a watch, it's some eye blowing stuff. A research team has posted a video showing off some novel approaches to gesture controlled touch input for mixed reality HMDs and nanotechnology is being used to develop meta lenses for AR and VR headsets, which will not only be drastically lighter than what we have now, they'll also have much better colour distortion correction than current gen lenses. Definitely worth a read, as always, all the links are in the description. And finally, Oculus has filed a patent for a fucking complicated AR device. What the fuck's a frame L05? And that's this week on The Grid VR. You can help support this channel by grabbing exclusive rewards on Patreon, and if you like this video, then crush that like button, have your say in the comments below, and hit the XO logo to subscribe if you wanna. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.